What's up, everybody? Cigar Sherpa Laird Mayhew back with another cigar review. Today, I've got the Alec and Bradley Blind Faith in Toro. Stay tuned. I can smoke stogies in my house, first of all, because her father introduced me to stogies, and second of all, because I'm a stud. I'm ballsy. I don't take no shit from anyone. I smoke my stogie anywhere I want. I don't have to find a hideout place like you. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back to another review here at Cigar Sherpa. I am your host, Laird Mayhew, and I apologize for the gap in reviews. I came down with an illness, which I'm still kind of fighting off. I'm coming to the end of it. The good thing is I kept my flavor profile the whole time. I just felt like dirt. Uh, and on the day I started feeling sick was the day that they started reporting about this coronavirus. And I'm a hypochondriac, so... I don't have the coronavirus or whatever it is coming out of China. I just got one of those feverless, icky, cruddy colds. But I'm at the end of it. Got to do a cigar review. Been wanting to smoke this cigar since I heard about it or do a review on this cigar. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it today. So what we got today, as it said in my intro, is the Alec and Bradley. Notice how I said Alec and Bradley. Traditionally, it's Alec Bradley, okay? And I guess we all thought Alec Bradley was a dude, was a guy, okay? Unless you really, really delve into cigars, which, you know, some of us do. But I never did. I just figured Alec Bradley was a guy. Uh, even was at the Big Smoke in Las Vegas and saw the Alec Bradley booth and still didn't catch on to the fact that uh, Alan Rubin is actually the guy who owns it. And he named the company after his sons. Alec and Bradley. So they grew up in the industry. They're in their early 20s now and they got together. Alec and Bradley got together and collaborated on this blend right here. So that's all the history I'm going to give you. Uh, so it's Alec and Bradley. Um, it even says, you know, you'll see it right there, Alec and Bradley. So pretty cool band. I don't know what it is. Kind of like mm, TV looking. Looks like a TV with some white noise in the background some like mathematical equations or something. But anyway, nice cigar. Uh, construction on this cigar, you know, right away. The band, the, the wrapper is a uh, Honduran Habano wrapper from the Trojes region of Honduras. Okay, that's about the best I'm going to pronounce it because I ain't going to damn try to pronounce it the way it's pronounced. Trojes or Trojas, whatever. Um, it's got a double binder. So it's a Nicaraguan and Habana, uh, I mean a Honduran binder. And it's got Nicaraguan filler tri-blend, okay? Um, and I didn't delve into that too much. I think I saw, like, it was Corojo, or, yeah, Corojo 98 and some other 99. So it smells really nice. It's got a very nice, um, like, humidor smell, kind of like a hay smell to it. Um, the wrapper is like a, it's a nice, like, milk chocolatey brown color. It's pretty smooth. I mean, it's rustic looking. It's got, like, a rustic feel to it. It's kind of toothy with a slight sheen, okay? It's not very oily, but it's got a nice little sheen on there, okay? But the smell coming off the foot of this thing has got like a chocolatey dried fruit, like raisins. So chocolate, you mix chocolate and raisins, what do you get? You get that raisinette candy, and that's what it smells like. I mean, it's very pungent too, so. Um, looks like it's got a double wrapper on it. I could be wrong about that, but that's what I'm seeing, double wrapper. It's nicely put on there. It's nice and flat. Uh, you know, tight seams, visible seams. So we're going to go ahead and get into this thing. It's got a foot band on it, and i got to take off. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this thing a cut and a light, and we're going to get this thing fired up, and I'm going to tell you what I think about it. Stay tuned. All right. Uh, let me get a puff on this. Right away, I'm getting black pepper. Mm. Yeah, right away um, from the light, yeah, that black pepper on the retro hell is going to get you, so be careful with that. Um, it's got a good spicy flavor to it right away. I'm not really sure. I can't identify the spice. Well, it's a baking spice, a general baking spice, kind of a... Uh, like a sweet spice and black pepper, okay? Um, there's a sweetness in there. I'm, I'm sure it's gonna develop into a lot more. It's just barely there right now. Um, it's got a perfect draw, very little resistance. 
Um, the smoke's very full, very oily right off the bat. Okay, so that's a good sign of things to come. Um, I mentioned this thing. I got it in a Toro size, which is a 6-inch by 52 ring gauge, and I paid $10 for it. Okay, so there's all the information you need on that. And so far, we are kicking it off with a very, very good black pepper flavor on the palate, black pepper in the retro hail, and the undertones right now, the nuance that I'm getting is a like a baker's spice and a creamy, oily smoke. Leaves a nice finish. So let's get into the first third of this thing, and then I'll tell you what I really think. All right, all right, all right. We're about 10 minutes into the, uh, the first third here, and being that it's got a double uh, binder on there. This is going to be a slow burning cigar and it is burning slow, but uh, I just wanted to take a minute real quick to um, to send out my condolences um, to the family of Kobe Bryant. I mean, I'm not a big, big, you know, this ain't a news channel. It's not a sports channel, but anybody who's anybody, if you're an American, whether you watch sports or not, you know who Kobe Bryant is. Uh, Kobe Bryant, you know, he came into the NBA and just kind of like took it by storm at a time where Michael Jordan was, you know, the main the main show in town and, and Shaquille O'Neal. And he came in at like 17 years old and he just dominated. And he was, a, you know, for all intents and purposes, this was a good man. Uh, he was a good family man. I know he had some trouble back then and there, but, you know, that's typical of young athletes. And I'm not going to get into that. Um, the saddest part was, you know, I was, I was, I was, I heard about it right when it dropped. I was in my truck and I had it on news station and right at like 2.15 in the afternoon it came in and I was just like, wow, that's that 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 sucks. I mean, it's kind of, you know, it, it happens with famous people when they're young. But um, then about 45 minutes later, they started circulating a rumor that his daughter, his 13-year-old daughter Gianna was with him and she was... Um, the one that was kind of taken on because he didn't have any sons. And uh, funny story I heard about him from a friend on you know the news stamp channel was people would always be like Kobe, you gotta have a son, you gotta have a son, you gotta take on you know someone that's gonna carry on that lineage. And she would jump in and be like, oh, I got this, like, like I I'm doing it. And she was, and that's where they were actually going um, is to a basketball game. The Black Mambas, that, you know, named after him. But that broke my heart as a father with daughters. Um, I'm just so thankful every day that, you know, they are doing very good. They're in their 20s or, or you know, 19 and 20, 21 years old. And uh, condolences, condolences to all the Kobe Bryant fans out there. I know people that were fans of his that just really love that guy. And uh, he's going to be missed in the sports community. So there you go. Uh, back to the cigar. Okay, so we're into the first third and I'm already getting a canoe. Um, that's going to have to be touched up. Typically in a cigar review, you don't want to like touch it up. You just want to let the cigar burn and, and do what it's going to do. But I'm going to end up touching that up because if the cigar, if it doesn't burn evenly, the flavors are just going to be off. You know, they're blended to, to burn perfectly even. And, you know, that just happens. So, so far, like I said, the, the okay, so that pepper spice is mellowed out. Okay. Um, it's taken on more of a nuttiness. It's earthy, and it's got a sweetness, almost like a brown sugar. It is like a brown sugar because anytime I get a sweetness with that baking spice that's there, you combine that together, and to me, I just automatically think brown sugar or caramel, but it's not very caramely. It's like a brown sugar, but um, it's definitely a medium body. It's maybe just a tick above medium so far on its way to full. But uh, I'm going to have to touch that up, like I said. And I'm going to come back when we're in the second, third, and I'm going to tell you what I think about it from there. But so far, I'm really liking this cigar. And I'll be honest with you, um, how I came about this cigar was a conversation I was having with a guy. I don't even know his name. I didn't really know him. He was in the cigar lounge about Alec Bradley cigars. Um, I like them. You know, I've had some good experience with them. It's not a cigar that I am drawn to. I'm more drawn to the um, foundation cigar line, the Garcia family cigar line, um, AJ Fernandez cigars, La Flor Dominicana cigars, more boutique cigars, okay? And this is like a boutique cigar right here. The flavors, it's very complex because I'm already getting like, like five flavors that are very predominant and they're very noticeable. Um, it's kind of like a nice ebb and flow of flavor profile in there. So I'm going to continue smoking this thing. I'm going to come back in the second, third. I'm going to tell you what I think about it from there. Stay tuned. 
All right, all right. Um, yeah, I just kind of hit a snag here. I don't know if it's going to ruin the whole experience, but uh, that right there just popped up. And, man, that's a big run, okay? So I was enjoying this cigar up until it started, you know, it started to kind of get, and I'm smoking it slow because it's a slow burner, and uh, I'm not taking big, big pulls off of it. And I noticed it started to get a little bit hot, so I kind of set it down and try to take it a little easy, and then I looked down and I saw that. So what I'm gonna have to do now is let the cigar go out. I'm gonna have to correct that burn, and then I'm gonna probably have to cut it, okay? And I don't know, once the cigar goes out and then comes back to life, uh, even if you get it right away, the flavors are just gonna shift a little bit, but. Um, I'm not even in the second third yet, or actually that run is in the second third, but that side's not. And uh, I, anyway, it, it was it was still keeping up the the same flavor profiles, whereas I left less left off. I did kind of start getting more of a coffee flavor, almost just like not a not a cup of coffee, like the coffee bean when you smell it in the bag. It was it's like a dry. Um, coffee flavor was coming on board and it mixes perfectly I am drinking you know black coffee it goes perfect with coffee still has that baker spice still has that black pepper which is mellowed out the finish is oily okay and it's got a sweet oily finish that lingers it stays there kind of waits on you and it's there into the next draw so I'm gonna do my best to fix this and try to save this review um, but it's maybe I have to cut this one short because I don't, I don't know, but, uh, I'm enjoying the flavor so far. The construction so far is a, so I'll be back. All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> we are at the halfway point thereabouts, maybe a little past it. That's the thing. One side of it is almost to the halfway point and the other side is at the halfway point. And I have been plagued with burn issues in this cigar. When I last left off, I had that bad canoe. I mean, it was like a soft spot in the construction it wasn't the wrapper it wasn't like you know smoking a joint back in the day where you could like wet the wrapper and stop that canoe and it's it was inside because it kind of came up from underneath and burned through and what i had to do was i basically had to torch the uneven side you know to burn it down to where it was level with the canoe really put some heat on it and burn it and then kind of let it settle and then ash it and try to get it as even as possible. Got it, within three drags, boom, canoe came back. So from here on out, I'm just gonna let it do what it does and uh, do it from there. But the flip side of that, the flavors on this thing are awesome. Good flavors. And I would like to say it's probably that I just got a bad cigar, but I have seen some other reviews on this cigar and there were burn issues um, in the um, some of those reviews and um, it was one of the things that the guy that was telling me about when we were having the discussion about Alec and Alec Bradley cigars in general. He, you know, he suggested this one, told me the, you know, Alec and Bradley little story there, but said that he had uh, burn issues with his. But anyway, I also noticed some like slightly like there's like some pinholes and I can't really get it on camera. But every time I take a draw, I kind of see air or smoke come out of one of those little pinholes. They just kind of look like little spots but then smoke comes through them. So construction on this thing, it needs a little bit of work. I don't, I don't know what happened there. Uh, I'm definitely gonna smoke another one because I really like the flavor and you know, maybe I'll touch back on it, but oh, we're in. We are in the second third and the flavors are great. I'm getting a sweet cedar, okay? It's cedary, it's sweet. There's a sweetness on the cigar. It's the sweetness kind of stays with every sweet cedar. It's got a good, like musty earth, which is kind of a sweet earth flavor. It's got that baker spice. It's got a dried fruit, okay? It's not as sweet as like a raisin would be. It's almost like a dried cherry or something like that. And I hate to say dried cherry because that's like, you know, how the hell do you know what it is? It's like a fruity taste, okay? And on the palate, you've got some good black coffee, okay? And of course, you know, you've got that pepper in there on the retro hill, it's still there. So it's complex. Mm. I would get lots of smoke. Okay, the smoke is, it's oily. It's not so much creamy, but it's oily. And I'm getting that oily finish on the, you know, on the finish. So when I'm not, when I'm not smoking and I've got like a nice oil coating of flavor in my mouth and it tingles a little bit. So it's like that black pepper there too. But 
Overall, like I said, I don't know if I don't score cigars with you know with numbers and stuff like that. The flavors are great. The construction's not so good. And that's about all I can say from here. So let me get into the final act of this cigar and then I'll tell you where I'm at there. So stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. We are halfway through the second third of the cigar. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if I was a cigar salesman, okay, like some of the reviewers on YouTube are, you know, they do the reviews and they're great reviews, but they also sell cigars. Um, I don't work for anybody except Laird Mayhew and you know you guys out there so the point i'm driving at is if i was a cigar salesman i would not post this review um but i'm a cigar reviewer so i just have to post up you know i have to review them how i see them in the construction on this thing it's just making it almost too much work to, to to smoke i mean the burn is consistently uneven it's constantly canoeing um the wrapper's coming apart right there okay um I took the band off, and the, I mean, the, 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 it was very warm down there, and I had a hard time getting it off because of the little A and B circular tab. And if you've seen the cigar or you get the cigar, you know what I'm talking about. It's really glued down, so you almost got to rip the wrapper off. And when I did that, when I was pulling it off, there was a little bit stuck to the wrapper. And that, in conjunction with the little pinholes, you know, I've got some cracking there, if you can see that right there. And I got cracking there. And now, if you're wondering how I store my cigars, my cigars stay in a humidor, which I am all over constantly, making sure that the humidity, and I keep my cigars right at about 67% humidity. The temperature is always 69 to 70 degrees, okay? I got it in a spot in my house where there's no direct sunlight. My house is always climatized, so. Um, and the, the where where I got this, my local um, tobacconist, you know, they, they're very precise in their storage so it's not a storage issue um and there's another crack forming right right there up at the top but with all of that being said the constant uneven burn it's causing the smoke to get really hot okay when you know when smoke gets hot it alters the flavor mm, and now it's going out There we go. But the sad part about it is, like I said before, the flavors are excellent. Okay. I'm smoking this cigar still because I like the flavors of it when I can get them. And it's almost like uh, you want to get it back. You want to fix the burn and get it back because you're enjoying the flavor. But man, it's so much work. So at $10 a stick, I just cannot recommend that you rush out and buy it. Now, if you come across a good deal, they're on sale, someone gives it to you, I really think that you're going to enjoy this cigar, especially if you like boutique cigars and you like complex flavors and you like the the spice, the baker spice, the pepper, the earthiness, the sweetness, you know, the oily finish. It's all there. It has all of that. So, um, my, you know, kudos to Alec and Bradley because your flavor profile is great. Um, this is the construction is killing it. So I'm going to end the review on that because... Mm. I'm not going to sit here and continue to fight with this thing to keep it burning. Okay. But uh, anyway, I just call them how I see them. And uh, you guys make up your own mind. You, maybe you've had a better experience with it. You can, you know, leave the comments um, with your experience in there. But anyway, if you haven't, uh, if you enjoyed this review, please subscribe to the channel. We're always looking for new subscribers. I think we're up to like 73 or 72, something like that. You know, of course, we're trying to get that to grow. And uh, again, I apologize for the delay. And I think you probably hear it in my voice a little bit. I'm still just a little bit sick. But like I said, I've been smoking cigars the whole time. And my flavor profile, I mean, my, my palate hadn't really changed. I'm able to taste everything. I just kind of feel cruddy. But uh, Cigar Sherpa Laird May, he reminded you to be polite to everybody that you meet. But always have a backup plan in case you need to shoot him in the face. And I'm out.